As hot topics go, generative AI is about as hot as it gets right now. So the soon to be published book by the inventor, entrepreneur from Silicon Valley and author Jerry Kaplan is both timely and, as its title suggests, very useful. Generative artificial intelligence, what everyone needs to know. So for Transform Talks, I asked Jerry the most basic need to know question. What actually is generative AI? Well, it's easy to ask and hard to answer. Most people are familiar with artificial intelligence in the applications of things like face recognition or self-driving cars or language translation. And those are very complex systems that are built in tune with all those specific applications. But some recent advances, some technical advances that are certainly not worth going into in any kind of detail, have made a whole new class of systems which are much more general that are also much uh, more capable than these earlier classes of systems. And what they do is they take this system and they basically feed in every written thing that's ever been written. That's almost the best way I could put it. You know, trillions of words of all kinds of stuff. And um, they, the system trains itself and learns what are all the connections between those words. And it becomes, in a way, generally intelligent. So you can talk to these systems and in ways that seem utterly astonishingly natural in the way that they respond. And the breadth of knowledge they have is encyclopedic. One of the most surprising things as they scaled up these systems is that they, they not only knew a lot, but they became, for lack of a better word, creative. Um, they are predictive in the sense that they kind of fill in the blanks uh, at a very, very deep level. So they, they, they take in what you say Internally, it is translated into a, a representation of the meaning of what you say in the context of all of the knowledge of humanity. And then it figures out what to say next, what's appropriate to say next as a response. And as a result, it's, it's astonishing. These are polymaths that are expert in almost every subject. They can give you advice. They can draft documents. They can write poetry, which is astonishing. I encourage anybody who hasn't tried it, try one of these systems, they're very accessible. Just say, write me a poem for my birthday, mm -hmm. and it will go ahead and do that. This is going to change everything. If you think the internet made a difference, this is absolutely going to be comparable, and perhaps more so. Because in the future, when you want the most objective, reliable, and uh, dispassionate, and accurate information, you're not gonna go to a human being you're going to ask a machine. Well, I was going to ask you, actually, maybe you've answered it before I've asked it, which is, which industries will it affect and how will it affect them? And your point is, no, no, it's every industry, it's everything. This is a fundamental technology. And to be frank about it, I'm not a person who has been a hypester about AI. Most of what I've given lectures about in the past before this is, okay, everybody calm down. There's been incremental progress. It's not that these are like robots that are suddenly going to rise up and become super intelligent. Mm -hmm. But I feel very differently about this particular development. It is quite possible that it will be proved to be the single most important invention in human history because of the power of these systems. These systems will discover new drugs. They will help us to address major problems like climate change. They will provide advice of every conceivable nature uh, they, they're surprisingly sensitive to uh, what you'd normally think of as human characteristics. For example, they can detect a faux pas, if you know what that is. Um, they can imitate the writing of everybody from uh, the King James Bible to James Joyce. Uh, these systems are absolutely astonishing, and I have learned a tremendous amount by engaging in dialogue with these systems, and I think that's where the future is going to be. So why, why do you think people as well as the media actually, why have we seemed to default to the sort of anxiety mm -hmm. rather than the sort of excited anticipation of what it can do? I think we, we focus a lot on it can make a poem or it can suggest some questions to ask. Whereas actually you're saying that no, it's much more than that. Much That's more the tip that. of the iceberg. Well, why are we not galvanized by that though? Well, the first is most people don't realize that it's uh, the tip of the iceberg. Mm. So some people are thinking, wow, that's, that's, that's a, they've, 
it's like teaching a, a bear to ride a bicycle. Wow, that's amazing. How can you teach a bear to ride? Look at this. This thing can write a poem. But that's not where the power of this is going to be. They'll be managing our institutions and our organizations. Uh, they'll create business plans for you. Uh, they'll give you love advice. It's very difficult for me to explain the, the depth mm -hmm. at which this is going to be. And we're right at the start. You can't just look at what's available today and say, okay, that's what it is. This is the leading wave of an incredible sequence of uh, improvements that are going to take place, probably likely to take place, I should say, over the next uh, five to ten years. And it's very hard to see where it goes. But that didn't answer your question. <laughs> to your question, when you have a new tool of this power, it is scary because you don't know how it's really going to affect things. Obviously, it has tremendous potential to make our lives better, to eliminate poverty, to uh, increase our standard of living, uh, to Im improve our communications, uh, to uh, streamline all kinds of business processes. But it will also have a number of negative effects. Uh, its ability to generate disinformation, yeah. uh, its ability to create these what are called deep fakes. Uh, right now, people are watching a video of you and me, and in five or ten years, they might wonder, well, was that real? Yeah. Because you'll be able to say, I would like to gener generate me a, a, a fake interview between uh, Gavin and Jerry, and it will be indistinguishable from something. It'll that make doing have. Transform Magazine a lot easier, I have to say, actually, if I can just conjure up any guests that I wish and yes. just sort of pop them on. But if I could just take a moment to describe the, uh, why I think this technology is going to be so important. First of all, it's not a, like an intelligent robot. When you query these systems, you're, you're not asking a thing. You're asking a question to the accumulated knowledge of mankind. It's a new kind of tool for querying you know, the, all the knowledge and information that's out there. And that's the way to think about it. Even though it looks like it's talking to you, that's just the interface. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, the way this is going to work. So it's a tool, but it's a tool that's so remarkable that it can use tools. So it's hard to say what it can and can't do. It will be able to use other tools, just like humans use tools. And so that's a whole departure. We've never had tools like that before. And even more important, it's an invention that can invent. And so we're going to see what can this technology do to propel us into a hopefully better future. But in short, don't stop and don't panic. Don't panic, don't stop. This has happened over and over in the past. I, I, we have a short interview here. I give you lots and lots of examples where people were panicked about you know, the new technology that was uh, becoming available. The probability is very strong this will be just like that, but it is a major new wave. It's almost like the, the domestication of electricity. That's the scale of the change that we're talking about here. The world runs on electricity today. And I think that the world will run on some future version of generative AI in the future.